By the way, what is your name? Walker. Kate Walker. Ma'am, is everything all right? It's just that you look very much like the person in the picture, Fraulein. Her name was Dana. Dana Rose. I've come a very long way to find out about her. I would really like to know who she is. It's very important to me, you see? It was a very long time ago. For an expedition, scientists were being trained by a local alchemist, Leon Kabatis. Just what I was looking for. Perfect. You should be ashamed! You are drunk, Herr Hoss. Out of my way. How could you agree to this, Leon? How could you? Whatever could happen between Dana and Leon, I needed to be included, one way or another. There's something sinister about all this. My mission was to guide you and the rest of the expedition here, not to get involved in your harebrained research. I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation. We'd better leave the mountain soon, or we won't survive. Promise me you'll be very careful. She left for an unknown destination. What happened, Dana? There must be a link between my mom and Dana, too. By the way, what is your name? Walker. Kate Walker. Ma'am, is everything all right? It's just that you look very much like the person in the picture, Fraulein. Her name was Dana. Dana Rose. I've come a very long way to find out about her. I would really like to know who she is. It's very important to me, you see? It was a very long time ago. For an expedition, scientists were being trained by a local alchemist, Leon Kabatis. Just what I was looking for. Perfect. You should be ashamed! You are drunk, Herr Hoss. Out of my way. <laughs> How could you agree to this, Leon? How could you? Whatever could happen between Dana and Leon, I needed to be included, one way or another. There's something sinister about all this. My mission was to guide you and the rest of the expedition here, not to get involved in your harebrained research. I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation. We'd better leave the mountain soon, or we won't survive. Promise me you'll be very careful. She left for an unknown destination. What happened, Dana? There must be a link between my mom and Dana, too. By the way, what is your name? Walker. Kate Walker. Ma'am, is everything all right? It's just that you look very much like the person in the picture, Fraulein. Her name was Dana. Dana Rose. I've come a very long way to find out about her. I would really like to know who she is. It's very important to me, you see? 
It was a very long time ago. For an expedition, scientists were being trained by a local alchemist, Leon Kabatis. Just what I was looking for. Perfect. You should be ashamed! You are drunk, Herr Hoss. Out of my way. <laughs> How could you agree to this, Leon? How could you? Whatever could happen between Dana and Leon, I needed to be included one way or another. There's something sinister about all this. My mission was to guide you and the rest of the expedition here, not to get involved in your harebrained research. I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation. We'd better leave the mountain soon, or we won't survive. Promise me you'll be very careful. She left for an unknown destination. What happened, Dana? There must be a link between my mom and Dana, too. By the way, what is your name? Walker. Kate Walker. Hey guys welcome 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 happy saturday welcome how's it going dan it's so good to see you this morning happy saturday how's everybody doing yes happy saturday how you doing dan what's up what are you up to today dan i am feeling really good today i um normally on a saturday especially this pa over this past winter, I would, um, especially if I'm streaming, like on a day like today, which doesn't happen very often, but I noticed I've been doing it like a little bit over the last little while. Um, I would sleep in, I would be at the computer all day, I wouldn't get any exercise, and I'd wind up at the end of the day feeling kind of crappy physically. And, um, mentally not very good about myself because of the choices that I'd made. So today, this morning, when I woke up, you know, you sort of wake up when you wake up on your own without the alarm and you sort of wake up and you're lying there and you're still tired, but you're not sure if you're going to go back to sleep or not. And this morning I chose, the sun was shining, so I chose to get up and I went for a really short bike ride this morning, but the sun was out and it was beautiful and frosty out this morning and I was just so glad that I had actually gotten outside gotten a little bit of sunshine and gotten a little bit of exercise and kind of set the day for me so I feel really good about that um you just started just about to start a flight to get it completed before you go down to the bar nice you actually went outside into what normal people call the real world earlier yes yes went into the real world. I even saw people out there. It was actually, it was nice because it was still relatively early for a Saturday. So it was quiet outside, which is what I absolutely love about being out in the morning. But there was still, you know, I wasn't the only, it's not like I was the only one up. It wasn't that early. Um, so yeah, it was nice. There were like a few other people here and there. And, you know, there was one guy out walking his dog and he's like, good morning. So it's always nice to make that connection with other people. <laughs> Even if it's just like, good morning. <laughs> it's nice. People are like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause real, cause people on the computer aren't real. <laughs> yeah, but it's different. It's different when you're making that connection in person. <laughs> real alive people as opposed to the not alive people on the computer. <laughs> Ah. Mm. Morning. Also, when I took my blood pressure this morning, um, <laughs> when I took my blood pressure this morning, my blood pressure was down. So that's good. I've been behaving really well all week, watching, you know, what I'm doing, what I'm eating, and uh, it shows. So yeah. Ka-ching! So much better than last weekend where like I was just, you have no idea. You have no idea how much I ate. <laughs> Not just how much I ate, um, because I don't think I ate a lot, but I ate a lot of junk. I ate a lot of stuff that wasn't good for me. 
and I knew that I shouldn't. And uh, it showed. It showed by the end of the week. I felt it. I, it wasn't just me that felt it. It was reflected in my blood pressure and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thank you. So are you guys ready to finish the game? I think we're going to finish today. I feel like we were super, super close last night um, when I ended the stream. And I wasn't sure. I was kind of hesitating. I had to go for a bit and I didn't know if I wanted to like leave for a bit and come back and finish it or if I wanted to leave last night and then come back for a short stream today. So I decided in the end to come back for a short stream today. I think I'm actually going to make Saturday streams at this time a regular thing. I think I'm going to add it to my schedule. I think I'm going to add um, a couple more days to my schedule. I want to increase my streaming time. I feel like I can do that right now. So yeah, I think I'm going to add. So in addition to my regular Mondays and Fridays, I have been streaming on Thursday evenings, which I think I'm going to make a regular day. I'm going to, I think, make Saturdays at this time a regular time for me and possibly also Wednesday. So I will be updating my schedule. Take a look for that. Um, yeah. Anyways, let's dive into our game. I am just, I'm thrilled with this game. I'm so happy with the way it's turned out. I love some of the things that they've done. Yesterday they had like such a long cinematic that we watched that it felt like I was sitting at a movie theater almost. <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. But they have, they, they've got all these twists and turns, like you get to play as other characters, and I love the way that they did the transitions between characters, and, you know, the story has taken really unexpected twists and stuff. So I love everything they've done with this. In terms of the in terms of the franchise, the series, the Siberia series, um, it's it it's related to the previous games in the sense that you know you're still dealing with a world in a world with automatons and stuff like that, you know, and Hans Vorlberg, who was you know the person that Kate was searching for all the way through the first three games. Um, Actually, the first two games, and then after that, she was searching for the mammoths. <laughs> so, yeah, but like the, he was sort of like the central person other than Kate that we were dealing with throughout the whole franchise. He's not really the central fi figure. Um, he's sort of like, you know, he was here and he left kind of thing. He passed through this area, and it's really Dana Rose, who's more, she's more the central figure, you know, uh, other than Kate. But there are so many other characters that they've, like, created and developed for this one that I'm just, I'm absolutely loving it. So let's continue. So we are starting off today in the Musician District of Wagen in 1945. We're going to be playing as Dana. So spring 1945, after Wagen is liberated and the brown shadow defeated, Dana returns, broken by the tragic end to the Battle of Zilberspiegel. It will be her final visit. So yeah, this is sort of the story as related by Lenny of the last time that she saw Dana. And if you missed yesterday's stream, plug your, and you don't want spoilers, plug your ears. But at the end of yesterday's stream, we found out that... Um, Wow, we found out so much <laughs> over the last couple of streams. We found out that Dana got pregnant, that she lost the baby, um, that she went to London to work for the Allied Forces um, in the Foreign Office, and then she returned to Wagen when they found out that Leon was actually still alive working for the Resistance in Wagen. She came back. She was dropped, literally, she parachuted down from the air. She dropped into Wagen. Um, <laughs> and she was supposed to do this one mission with Leon and they were going to get a very important person. They were going to get him to Switzerland. Um, but things did not go quite as planned. 
Lenny was jealous of the love between Dana and Leon and things things were said things were done that should never have been done um it, they wound up being attacked by the brown shadow and the expedition had to like make a hasty retreat through the mountains when it wasn't safe to do so and Dana stayed behind to sort of cover them and uh, to fight the brown shadow and help cover them and Leon wound up getting killed in an avalanche and Lenny was shot and I guess she's paralyzed from the waist down I think from at this after this point because of uh she was shot apparently in the spine I guess um and yeah Dana's just like after all this after everything that she's been through her parents were killed she lost Leon he was gone for like seven years only to find him again and then lose him again she lost her baby <laughs> you know like she's just like what more can happen to this poor girl and we're about to find out Yeah, she's getting about quite a lot. <laughs> so let's see. At this point, the Allied forces have won, and um, we've liberated. They've liberated uh, Wagen. Is this Herr Haas? I think. The little Vagaran scorch. Yeah. Still clinging on like fleas on a rat, I see. <laughs> oh, I was so disappointed I didn't bump into you when we sacked your parents' house. Hmm. That's Before we boss. threw them in the Dombra River. This is so hard. I just want to like smash his face in, but that's not an option. He's trying to get a reaction. We're not going to give him the satisfaction. Run, rabbit! Run! Because we'll soon be back to finish off scum like you yeah who's the scum dude who's the scum you are sorry i almost said a bad word there i thought it <laughs> ah let's see what else can we do Wagen is free! Wagen Patriots smash Brown Shadow and hoist Ostertal flag over the city. Woohoo! Ostertal Patriots rebelled against their Brown Shadow conquerors and liberated their capital city of Wagen today. As a massive allied army gathered at the city gates, thousands of besieged partisans stormed Brown Shadow barricades, overpowered the enemy garrisons, and hoisted the Ostertal flag victoriously over the city! The latest word at headquarters was that Allied troops had joined Wagen Patriots on the musical square in the heart of the capital after bitter fighting with Brown Shadow and Wagen collaborationist militiamen. In an extraordinary speech, one Soviet major took the stage among the automatons of the square. He said, This great day of liberation would not have happened without the continued war effort of so many, and notably of one Soviet factory in the industrial city of Komkolsgrad. What? What's that got to do with anything? Situated between the, U the Ukraine and Kazakhstan, this factory has been able to maintain its activity of extraction and refinement of heavy metals thanks to its workforce of automatons. What? The major added, it is a fitting conclusion that the very creator of that factory of automatons also created this musical square on which we stand today as free citizens of the world. His name was Hans Vorlberg. What? What? Tom Colesgrad. Oh, is that one of the places that we visited in the first game? I think it is. It was not a very happy place. 
The Vagen Radio confirmed late tonight that the Ostertal capital had been liberated and that the Brown Shadow Commander in Chief had signed an unconditional surrender. Woohoo! <laughs> victory! Sweet, sweet victory. So we still have to piece together how Dana is linked to Kate. What is this line for? Why are people lining up here? Since oh. the liberation, everyone in Wagen seems to be looking for someone. Missing people. Goodness me, it's you, Dana. Herr Gustav? Wish it was still a music academy, eh? I'm at HQ now, you know. Yes. I just visited Lenny. That's why I've come too. I wanted to see her before I leave. How is she? Surviving, I suppose. The Allies are taking care of her here in the infirmary. Thank goodness. Special treatment for her exploits in the Resistance. But uh, it's unlikely she'll ever walk again, though. I'm so sorry for what happened to her. I let Leon die alone, and I couldn't even help Lenny when she got hit during the assault on the refuge. I understand you, my lovely. I do. But don't blame yourself, eh? Yeah, Regrets, maybe. We all have a few. And some more than others. Especially in times of war, Dana. It's the way of the world. We just have to move on best we can. Maybe if we could all just let the water flow under the bridge, the swans will come back and we'll all be able to live together again. Like we used to. Would be good, if it's at all possible. And Lenny? I promise to take good care of her for the rest of my life. I lost my little girl once. I'm not losing her again. I'll take up my job at the refuge and I'll adapt it to her handicap. See? He's so British. <laughs> Is everything okay, Dana? Okay. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. I want to know why everybody is calling him a coward. So yeah, I'm definitely going to ask. But I wanted to say first, if anyone is to blame for Lenny's injury, it's Lenny. Because those brown shadow people would not have been there attacking them at the refuge if she hadn't tipped them off. So that's her own fault. Yeah, where were you during the occupation? He sounds like he's feeling super, super guilty. Where were you during the occupation? Lenny never mentioned it. Uh. <laughs> if you want to know, I uh, was cleared by the military court, Dana. That's not an answer. It might well have something to do with the fact that I'm the father of a heroine. But all the same, I was cleared of any wrongdoing, you see. That's... Oh, I see. I see very well, Herr Gustav. You have a good day now. He worked. He must have worked with the Brown Shadow. That must be what he did. Hezawa? Oh, Fräulein Dana. What are you doing here? Well, unlike my former colleagues of the Origin Expedition, I refused to be hired by the Allies. So, by the same chalk, I turn down immunity. Why would you do that? Well, all I've ever wanted to do in life is to carry out my anthropological research. But if there's one thing I learned in Baltaya, it's that it can't be done by serving the designs of this or that superpower. Not even momentarily. 
I've had enough of prostituting science. So, I've given myself up to be judged for accepting to be financed by the Brown Shadow. I see. I'm sorry about Leon, Fräulein Dana. I know you were close. He, uh, used to talk about you all the time. I'm sorry. I was rather, rather harsh toward him last time we met. He was a good man. I miss him. His integrity. Aww. I miss him too. I like this guy. Hezawa? Yes, Fräulein Dana? Thank you for passing Leon's letter on to me about what happened in Baltea like you promised you would, despite your own grief. It's proof that you're a man of honor. I wish you well now. That's it. I'm definitely done with everybody here. I should go and talk to Lenny in the infirmary now. Okay. Uh, how do I do that? How do I get to the infirmary? Is it back here? Mm, nope. <laughs> That's not an option. Okay. How do I get to the infirmary? Not through there. Did I see this? Probably right at the beginning. I don't think I did. Okay, unofficial report. My captain, I am writing to inform you of a troubling incident. Do you remember the prisoner the Reds handed us before they left? A redhead, chatty, an official party artist. She was supposed to go before the military court yesterday for all the propaganda sh work she did for the Brown Shadow. However, as I prepared to bring her there, a high officer, a Brit, called me over. He said we had the wrong person and ordered me to release her. Since he was of a much higher rank, I obeyed, but it has since left a bitter taste in my mouth. The Reds were absolutely certain she was guilty and unsurprisingly, she has vanished since the British officer convinced me to release her. Do you think I have enough of a case to file a report with the military police? I look forward to your wisdom and advice in this matter. Humbly yours, Sergeant Scott Curtis. <laughs> That's awesome. You must be talking about Yunta. And as we now know, she was a double agent, so yeah. Um, I am lost. Visit Lenny in the infirmary. I know, but how do I do that? Do I line up, maybe? No, that's just to look. How do I get to Lenny? Oh, duh, that door over there has a cross on it. Must be over here. You can do it, Dana. Oh. Okay, I misunderstood what those options were. We're gonna say goodbye and leave. I think I'm done exploring the other room there. Hello, Lenny. I have to leave, Lenny.
Every new day in Vargen is like another agony for me since Leon died. I can't face being here anymore. Not now that the town is freed. So, I've decided to leave for America. Yes! I'm going to try to start life over. I don't know if I'll do any better in the United States, but I'll have more of a chance of getting by there than here. I'm not abandoning you, Lenny. Ludwig's staying to help you find Leon's body in the mountain. And I'll write to you, often. I won't forget you. I'm so sorry. Is she not even gonna say anything? She knows that it was her own fault. She's not gonna say anything? So, Dana, she... She never knew what you did? Indeed. Oh. Okay, back to 2005. So, did she write to you like she promised? From the United States? Yes, she did. For the next 40 years. She's still alive, then? Can't say for sure, but there's a good chance. Well, let's go! Come on! Back to the Can US! You oh, I've had enough of explaining. Explaining to myself. All I want now is to find some peace far away from guilt and loneliness. I'm going to rest now. Um, is it time for her to forgive herself? I mean, you know, she's been living with this her entire life, the consequences of her actions and her feelings because of it. She loved Leon too, it would appear. No. <laughs> You'll find the last letter I received from Dana in my automaton. It will give you the answers you're looking for. Thank you. I can't. She didn't intend for what happened to happen. But, I mean, her trip to talk to the brown shadow, that was intentional. This is cute. I love this. I mean, where do I turn this to? Oh, like this, maybe? And the same with the other side. Makes a keyhole. We got a key, didn't we? There we go. Mechanical key, no, this one? It's not the proper setting of the key. No. Oh, this is giving me flash black flashbacks of Black Mirror. Okay. So we need um the two things out. The two diamondy things. Eight. So we need to put this away. 
And put this away. Diamondy things, by the way, is a scientific term, <laughs> in case you're wondering. <gasps> oh, we have to use the same key again, but configure it differently. Okay, I like this. This is neat. So this time, we need this down, this out. I think that'll do it. Oh, it won't fit. I must display the key properly. Oops. I must have done that wrong. I thought it would be easier if I can... Um, see it while I'm trying to configure the key. So we've got the round one at the top, the diamond one. So the round one at 12 o'clock, the diamond one at 3 o'clock. So, I don't know. Maybe the other two? I don't know. <laughs> No, it's not the proper setting of the key. Really? Looks like I can change its shape. Okay, let's put them all out and see if we can figure this out. I don't understand what I'm doing wrong here. I can't really rotate it. Um, it's definitely only the two things. I'm confused. It seems like such an easy puzzle. Is it because I have to rotate it somehow? Because that's easier said than done. I know, right, Dan? I don't know, it looks like it ought to be, like, it's sticking out too far, and there's, like, this little bump there. Oh, it won't fit. I must display the key properly. Looks like I can change its shape. Okay, is there anything else I can do with the key? This is making no sense to me. No, it's not the proper setting of the key. Oh, it won't fit. I must display the key properly. Okay, well, I don't, this doesn't look right to me, but let's do this instead. See if that helps. That looks backwards to me. It does look backwards to me, but I can see it now. I can see it when you put it in, it'll be correct. It's because I'm looking at it backwards because I've got the bottom facing me. If I do this, it's correct. Got it. So, let's see. 
Uh, it's because... There, see? You can see it now. And you know what? I did the same thing playing Black Mirror. <laughs> it's because I had the key, you know, like, say I'm trying to do the tip of this pencil here. It's because I had it facing this way instead of this way when I was trying to figure out which ones needed to be out. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> and I did the same, the exact same thing when I was playing Black Mirror. Sorry, I got my sleeves rolled up. And I'm having trouble pulling them down past my elbows. <laughs> you couldn't figure that one out? Sometimes, sometimes it's stu with stuff like that, it helps to sort of um, talk it out. And a lot of the times I'll sort of narrate what I'm doing and what I'm thinking and people think I'm asking for help and I'm really just sort of like talking through the problem. But also sometimes it, um, no, it gives other people ideas that I don't think of. Like yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before when we were in the cemetery and I like, I had no idea what to do. And Bear told me to try using Oscar. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, like the, like the clue. And he told me later the clue was in the word in the wording that the game used. Like she wouldn't fit. Well, who will? Who would fit? Oscar would fit, right? Okay, what is this? Who? So we made those go in. What does that do? It's blocking it. We have to stop this thing from rotating, I guess? What does this do? Oh, I think I stopped at the wrong spot. Okay. No! Is that close enough? Oh. What just happened? <gasps> look! Look, guys! I just realized what we're doing. This is a heart. This is an automaton heart. We're gonna put Oscar in here. But then he's gonna be a chair automaton. I guess that's okay. You should be able to control this body now, Oscar. Let's work together to unlock it and find that letter from Dana. Ah, oh, this puzzle's more complicated than I thought. I thought that was gonna be it and then we would get the letter. But wait, there's more. So at the beginning of the game, someone came in and asked me about the puzzles and I was like, you know, I really can't say that there have been puzzles so far, but it's like we get more and more puzzles as we progress through the game. I like it. This lock. I think I need to slide the small moving part nearby in order to unlock it. Maybe I could ask for Oscar's help if I get stuck. Can we swap back and forth? Lock. A new body. Again. <laughs> oh, how basic. How basic? Oh, his body is basic? Is that what he's saying? So what can we do as Oscar? Oh. Down. <gasps> Down. Okay, what does Kate have to do? This lock. I think I need to slide the small moving part nearby in order to unlock it. Maybe I could ask for Oscar's help if I get stuck. Okay, what's the small moving part that we have to slide? Is it this? Thing stuck. It's stuck? Thing stuck. What have we got here? It's 
So is this for the right arm? What happens if we put the right arm up now? Because we put it down, right? So if we put it up. Turn this? No? How do I move this? <laughs> what if I move the other arm now? Okay, that one went down. still confused. Things stuck. This lock. I think I need to slide the small moving part nearby in order to unlock it. Maybe I could ask for Oscar's help if I get stuck. We're already stuck. I'm so confused by this puzzle. So we uncovered, Oscar uncovered something. Let's try moving the arms again. Hmm. Does that help us? Still don't know where the small moving part is that we have to move. We can ask for a hint, but I, I feel like it's not gonna help us. It's this lock. I think I need to slide the small moving part nearby in order to unlock it. Maybe I, I could ask for Oscar's help if I get stuck. I don't know where the small moving part is that I have to slide. Like it looks to me like I have to slide something along this track. Things stuck. Things stuck. So, do we have to move this up to this spot? We need to get this over here, I guess. I think that would be the way to do it. So these, were they in the correct spot to begin with? I'm so confused. These didn't move at all. Things stuck. So is it the head position that unlocks that from being stuck? Things stuck. Okay, so that's stuck no matter what position Oscar's head is in. 
does it have anything to do with the arms? that we're supposed to do. Things stuck. So the arm position doesn't seem to make a difference either. What am I missing? This lock. I think I need to slide the small moving part nearby in order to unlock it. Maybe I could ask for Oscar's help if I get stuck. <laughs> can open part of the back of the automaton. Maybe I can find something that can be of use inside. Oh. Okay. I had to leave that and come back here. Okay. I should have figured that out on my own. I should be able to use this. Yeah, we're gonna have to configure no, this. It's not the proper setting of the key. More, more of the key. That should work. There we go. Dang. What do we have down here? Huh, what's this? Things stuck. <laughs> oh my god, Kate. You're gonna... You're gonna kill me, Kate. You're gonna be the death of me. Okay, now can we do this? Things stuck. No! <gasps> do I have to get this one over as well? this okay no Okay, that's not what I expected. Things stuck. Oh my god, game, I hate you. How do we get it unstuck? Okay, so it's either these these two little doohickeys here are fixed uh, distance apart from each other. So I can either have this one lined up or this one lined up, but not both. But how do I get this unstuck? <laughs> Try 
Turn the handles at the bottom. Okay, what handles are you referring to? Like these? They don't have a hot spot on them, so I can't do anything with them. These are screws holding them together. The only thing I can do something with is this. Thing stuck. And if I just tap the right trigger, that's what it says. I can't move it at all. That's the issue. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to tell when you're not the one playing. I can move this. I can rotate this. Two positions. I suspect that this is the correct beginning position. And I think I'm going to have to have this over here. Maybe I need to move these out of the way? I, I don't know. But it doesn't seem to matter what the position of those things at the top is for the moment. I can't move the thing at the bottom. Okay, wait, what if I do... Can I leave this, like, straight up? No, it won't let me. It has to be one way or the other. There are no other positions? Okay, it's either one way or the other. So I think I wanted like that to start with. We also have this spot. Things stuck. I guess this is a compartment for putting stuff in. Maybe this is what I'm trying to open. And I guess the part on the front is um no. Like the lock. Things stuck. Things stuck. You lost, Kate. Oh yeah, this is super confusing. So there's that. There's also um, we can swap to Oscar's point of view, and we can manipulate him by putting his head up and down. and moving the arms up and down. Ah, oh, what have we got here? There we go. Now we got it. Why does the music sound so sinister? Where did my pointer go? Why does the music sound so sinister? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay, now I think we have to put the arms down. Or up, I can't remember. Whatever they are now, they have to be the opposite. This is that spooky music. I should be able to remove the lock. Oh, oh, this is neat. I have to do one side at a time. Okay.
Okay, now we have to swap to the back and shift the thing over. I think we might have to tilt Oscar's head. I don't know, we'll find out. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to tilt off we're gonna have to tilt Oscar's head so that we can have access to that keyhole. So wrong way. There we go. And we're going to have to move his arm. You want it up? Yeah, I think that ought to do it. I think I can turn the crank now. Whoa! <laughs> but wait, there's more! Um, it looks like they need to be all closed, I think. Yep. So complicated. Oh my god. Everything was in his hat. That was a cool puzzle. Did I not grab it? The letters from... Oh, letter. Just one letter. Spring 1983. Dana sent this letter 20 years ago to Lenny. Back in 1983, I think that was when we had the flashback with Kate and she was asking her mom when she could have the um, music box. Spring 1983. Dana sent this letter 20 years ago to Lenny. Dana Goengrish, Manhattan. Her name changed. Achievement unlocked. The letter! May 21st, 1983. My dear Lenny, sorry if I haven't written in a long time. Things haven't been easy for me of late. What's going on? Spring 1983. My husband, William Gerngrich, passed away last summer. He was such a remarkable partner and a tremendous support. But as you know, Lenny, there used to be another world for me. The world before. Our world, Lenny. The world of Leon. I've honored my current contracts. But now I feel I need a change. Okay, what's gonna happen? Yep, we're in New York now. New York, 1983. Doesn't look like 1983 to me, though. Oh, 
Oh yeah. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> Things don't look quite like how they used to. <laughs> I love it. Our arrival photo. You don't know what 1983 looks like? You were what? <laughs> A star is born, and her name is Dana Goengrish. Oh! Have you been down to the cafe concert recently? If you have, then you will have fallen in love, in love with the virtuoso music of a rising star. Her name is Dana, and all we know about her is she came to the United States from her hometown in Central Europe in the aftermath of the war. So if you go down to the cafe concert tonight, you're sure for a big surprise, and this musicologist will be thrilled to bits to be the first to lead you to discover a pure genius before she is swept away to play at the world's greatest stages. That's neat. Look at the old timey phone. That is not, that is not an 83 phone. <laughs> that is not a 1983 phone. What are we hearing? The adoring fans? Can we open the drawers? Yes. Let us open these drawers. Let us see what's inside. Secrets. Tell us all your secrets. Come on, I see letters. Can't we read them? Ew. Let's read the letters. Tapes? We're gonna listen to a tape. Okay, just to warn you guys, this VOD is probably going to get muted for the parts that um, where Dan was playing Chopin back there, and maybe also for this. Whenever it's music that's not the original game music, it gets it gets uh, muted, which is a shame because uh, the VOD from the second or third night when Dan was playing at the Refuge, that portion got muted. Oh wait, is there anything else I can see by doing this? No, okay. What have we got over here? Also not 1983 music. Or a 1983 stereo. <laughs> or record player. Oh, it's unplugged. Is that significant? Why did it show us that? What's over here? Crescendo. Crescendo Entertainment. Dear Dana, my thoughts are with you as always during these difficult times. You know I will always be here through the good times and bad. I do understand your sudden desire to let everything go since dear William's passing. I really do. But I must ask you to give it some time before you throw in the towel. True, you are at the height of your fabulous career. But I sincerely believe there is a new and wonderful chapter yet to be written in your book of life. You are so much in demand, it would be such a pity to disappoint all those fans who adore you, and they really do. I hope you will take up this new offer that, of course, we have happily increased. It's only normal that the artist who made my label should receive all my sincere gratitude, not only from the heart, but also from the pocket. 
I have left the master copy of your latest recording for you to listen to before it goes to press. This is Dana at her very best, and once you've heard it, I hope you'll realize that such talent cannot possibly just walk away from her public. Yours, as always, Raymond Pratt, Artistic Agent. And what have we got in here? Notebook, uh, an eraser, a newspaper. I see anything else over here? I do not appear. I do not appear to have accomplished whatever I need to accomplish. Oh, contemplate your second life. I'm contemplating. The game is trying to tell us that we need to plug this in and listen to it. Like the camera focuses on the plug there. It's like, hint, 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 you need to do this. William and Dana go on Grish. Aww. No, I guess that's it. Old timey phone. It was a nurse who worked at the maternity ward at Baden Sanatorium before the war. Yes, when yes, I yes, spent yes. some time there. She had stumbled upon a letter written by her superior. It was a strange confession written by the chief doctor who was present when I went into labor. Oh, I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! She claimed that the child I gave birth to on April 5th, 1938 was alive. That they had seized the opportunity of me falling into a coma to give my daughter Anna to a couple yes. of friends of my parents. Business. I knew it! <laughs> Anna is alive, Lenny. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a shock. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Oh my god, this is so awesome. I cannot even imagine what she would be going through. <laughs> oh, I knew it! You can imagine, my dear Lenny, that I spent the following weeks searching for my daughter high and low. Oh yeah, I know exactly what house this is! I know it! It wasn't that difficult, even though my daughter's names had been changed. Okay, New Jersey, spring 1983. Oh, yes! Yes! This is awesome! I know whose house this is. <laughs> oh, I am, Dan. I so am. <laughs> I think a big part for me of what I like about stories is like trying to guess and trying to figure out the ending before I get there. And when I'm right, it's so exciting. <laughs> when I'm wrong, it's often exciting too, because it's like, it probably did something that I didn't expect. So it's like, wow. For a while, I just stood there, 
watching a woman who seemed to be the center of attention. She looked so confident, joyful, and full of life. She was surrounded by charming friends and a couple of old folks who must have been the Zimmers, her adoptive parents. Why didn't they ever tell Dana? I guess that's just not how things were done in those days. have children of their own. Oh my god, I remember. <laughs> Is she gonna look through the window and see her? Is she gonna say anything? Is she gonna just leave? Because she looks so happy? As I was watching my daughter, it appeared clear to me. I was an intruder in the life of Sarah Walker Zimmer. No! Mom? Oh, she never said anything. This young woman didn't look like me, and inspired nothing in me either. No really? emotion, no desire to run to her and take her in my arms. Absolutely nothing. It felt meaningless. I just did what I thought best in such cases. I took a trip into her assumed past, just to make sure there were no regrets. Really? She didn't feel anything? <laughs> Contemplate what could have been and give up the past. Wow. Okay, so we can look at the window. Nice house, by the way, right on the water. Wow. That VCR is still bugging me. It still says play. I still want to hit the play button. <sighs> okay, so there might be a few mechanical glitches in this game, but not very many. Definitely way better than the last one. I do still get hung up on objects every once in a while, but not like before. I can't believe I didn't notice these details earlier in the game, like um, Pao Zimmer wearing that uh, swan or this portrait, because I'm pretty sure I looked at this portrait when I was playing as Kate during the flashback. What's this one? Why is it face down? Ah! <gasps> 
They've done such a wonderful job with this, Dan. Oh my god! It's like little Kate made a birthday card for her mom and Dan is looking at it! Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. So we got happy birthday, mom. A drawing of, what's this, a lion, I think? <laughs> Kitty Kate. Their family in their house. Their dog. Okay, yeah. Some of the mechanical glitches are here. <laughs> How do I get out of here? There. Phew. Where else can I go? Show me where else I can go. I don't think I got a chance to fully explore this um, when I was playing before as Kate during the flashback because um, I wasn't anticipating that what I was about to do was going to end the scene that I was in. And I think that I remember seeing hot spots that uh, I didn't get a chance to look at. Places I did not get a chance to explore. Like it looks like I can maybe go upstairs. Guys, I did not see Kate outside with the rest of the party. If we go upstairs, are we going to meet Kate? Oh no, we're going to spy? Is she going to see Kate? What do we see? We don't seem to really see anything. There must be something to see by doing that. I want to go upstairs. I love this room on this house. This, uh, what, do, what would you even, what do you call this room? Like it's all glass, like a greenhouse almost. Orangery? <laughs> A ghost, Dana. That's all you are. Stop haunting these people and leave. No. That's what the Victorians used to call them, an orangery? I think I know that by a different term. I just can't remember what the term is. Did the Victorians used to grow oranges in them? Is that why they were called that? I want to see Kate. <laughs> I want to see little Kate. I want Dana and Kate to meet. Oh. No, I don't want to give up the past. Come on, there's room for everybody. You can be part of their lives. I was just about to leave when I heard piano music coming from upstairs. It stopped me in my tracks. Yes, that's what I was thinking, Dan. Thank you. Six little notes, pure, crystalline, that crushed my heart with an incredible violence. I climbed the stairs like an automaton, guided by the music of the hymn of Wagen. The music I was so proud to play on the main square of Wagen 
I never played it again after that. lost their way to the bathroom. must glide over the keyboard like swans over water. That's what our teachers at Wagen Academy used to say. <laughs> oh man, that was so well done. I can't believe it. Hey, Frostelian, welcome! Damn! They did such a good job! United States, the only destination that had any meaning to me. Farewell, my dear Lenny. Dana. Well, I will never understand human emotions. <laughs> I thought you would be happy to have the proof at last that Dana Rose is your ancestor. I'd totally forgotten that strange old lady who helped me play my piece on Mom's birthday. She was my grandma. Hmm. So, what are we going to do now? I don't know, Oscar. I really don't know. I think she's in I should feel happy to come to the end of this adventure. I found freedom. I kept my promise to Katyusha. But wait, and there's more! Discovered a fascinating part of my mother's past, kept secret until now. But it makes no difference to the guilt I feel over my mom's passing, <laughs> or the void I feel since her death. Maybe if I had met Dana in person, but that's impossible now. 
No, it's not. Last no, it's not. Of Dana, I have is this letter. No, she and said she was. Oh. It's over twenty years old. And besides, Dana implies she left for an unknown destination. The only like place left that had any meaning place. for her. To wait for the end of a life that no longer held any meaning for her. She could be anywhere. She's not anywhere. She's in Vagen. That's if she's still alive at all. She's alive. It would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. So, I don't know, Oscar. I really don't know anymore. He rolls into a ball, Frostelian. Do hedgehogs do that? I don't know that much about hedgehogs. Sorry, I'm really invested in this story. <laughs> As you could probably see. I'm like so into this. So, yeah. It feels like we've come to the end, but I think there might be just a little bit more and I am just blown away by what a great job they've done telling this story. Hmm. See, we don't have hedgehogs here. We have porcupines, but not hedgehogs. There's only one thing left to do, Oscar. What everyone has been expecting me to do since I jumped on the train with Hans. Go home. Oh, is she going to be reasonable and return to New York? <laughs> Blah. <laughs> There's an end to everything, Oscar. No. Okay, if that boarding pass was sent like two years ago, I hope it's very open ended. <laughs> Can you do that? Can you do that with plane tickets? Because presumably that was purchased like three years ago. What an amazing looking train station. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's a plane ticket. I don't think the train is going to take her across the Atlantic. So are we supposed to see something significant on this ticket? Okay, so Dana said in the flashback that we just had there, Dana said that she was going back to the only place left that had any meaning to her. And I think the only place that had a... Baltear, maybe? <laughs> yeah, we do have a talking mechanical rodent. Who knows? <laughs> My carriage number. This ticket will take me to the International Airport of Wagen and from there, back to New York. Okay, wait. What are the places that might have a uh, meaning for Dana? We've got Wagen. But we're sort of assuming that, you know, she's she's left here, you know, like, psh, she's gone. But what about Baltear? She used to talk about going to Baltear um, with Leon. Or London, because she worked there during the war. I don't know. I should find a phone to call Olivia before I take the shuttle. Ugh. Given all the trouble waiting for me in New York, I'm going to need all the help I can get. Oh, not Olivia. No, we don't want to talk to Olivia. I'm not sure if this is the right carriage. I better check the number on the ticket. Uh, I think it's at number three, right? Is that the phone booth? Don't go in. Number I'm one. Not sure if this is the right carriage. <laughs> I better check the number on the ticket. I don't want to call Olivia. I don't like Olivia. Olivia is mean and nasty and married her fiance. This is the map of the shuttle. I should be able to use it to find my carriage. I don't need a map. The carriages are numbered. 
And they go in, the numbers go in order. I don't know what this is on this cart here, but it looks like a giant eyeball. <laughs> I know, right? Consecutive numbers. And yet another red toolbox. We, I've been seeing these red toolboxes all over the game. But what an amazing looking train station. Just stay in Boggin forever. Am I stuck? Alright, I guess we're gonna call Olivia. Don't want to. <laughs> Yikes! I need to put in a coin to call Olivia. You're gonna make me put a coin in? I love how even the sounds at the train station are the Himaboggin. Like, portions of it. Olivia? It's me. What do you want, Kate? Didn't we say everything last time? Delightful you as always. Right, Olivia. I've been chasing moonbeams ever since my mom died. But I found my grandmother. Your grandmother? But Kate, she died years ago in New York. No, I mean my real grandmother. <sighs> Never mind. It's a long story. I'll explain everything when I get back. Oh, you mean... What, yes. she doesn't want her to I'm come back I'm back to New York. That's wonderful, Kate. I better tell Mr. Canton. He's still on your case, you know. The police will probably be waiting for you at the airport, but don't worry. Dan has connections. I'm sure he'll be able to help. Maybe he can persuade Marson and Larman to drop the charges. Okay, thanks. That would be a relief. I, I gotta go. Uh, the airport shuttle's about to leave. Yes, yes, go ahead. We'll meet you at JFK. I'm proud of you, Kate. You've made the right decision. Mm. Olivia? Yes? <laughs> oh, I hate Olivia. I'm so not sorry. I am not sorry for anything. I regret nothing. Olivia, you suck. Nothing. <laughs> I just wanted to... It doesn't matter. I'll tell you later. Listen, I I'd better go now, Olivia. I'll I'll call you if I can from the airport once I've got a flight. Yes, yes, you'd better get going. Take care, Kate. There's okay. no way she's going. You too. Bye now. No Talk way. Mm, pre present a valid train to get. Okay, so well, I guess we're going to number three. Uh, that's number two. Oh, is there anything to see over here? It didn't go in this direction. What's this? What is everyone lining up for over here? Why are people dressed in like such old-fashioned clothes and there's like this old-fashioned bag on the floor over there? I don't want to look. But the train is neat. I do like trains. That's my shuttle. Once it's taken me to the airport, I'll just use the ticket for New York that Olivia sent me, and that'll be the end of my voyage. But what about Oscar? How are we going to find him a more suitable body? Oscar does not like being a hedgehog. Okay, what is this? A ticket validator. Uh 
<laughs> okay. Um, I guess we have to put our ticket in. Just when I thought I was done. The default setting on the dials shows the wrong date. <laughs> okay, what's the... What's this? I guess I have to use it to set the day. I should set the month here. I guess we have to look at our ticket. Airport ticket. Is this the date? 30-11-2005? So, is that November 30th, 2005? I love it. Okay, put the ticket in. This is great. press there and I can press there. Okay. <laughs> Cute. And <laughs> Yeah, I think that was wrong. That didn't work so well. Oh, I guess I got ink. Where are my controls? Where did my controls go? Do I not get to stamp my ticket? Game? <laughs> Don't freeze on me now, game. We're like right at the end of the game. Come on. Okay, not that. Uh, this. There we go. Yeah, if that were actually for use by the general public, they'd have to put a big sign on it saying, do not put your hand here. <laughs> and then people still would, but then they wouldn't be able to sue them. My carriage number. Carriage three, as we thought. My ticket's all set now. Mm-hmm. I just need to get to my place. Ah. Uh, we're so not going to... We're not. We're not going to... Um... New York. I swear to God, we're not. The puncher would be the last one we're nine percent That's true. You're trusting people to put the right date on. <laughs> That's a bit much to ask. <laughs> so I guess we present our ticket to the this automaton. Is the right carriage, but the door still shut. Yeah. Please present your ticket. Yay! Looks like this mechanism is connected directly to the door. And this would never work, because it would be totally jammed. <laughs> mm. 
Oh my god, I love how he's looking at it. That's awesome. Oh, and he nods! Perfect. What's to stop people from just pressing that green button right to begin with? We just won't think about that. Don't get in. Don't get in. I do want to see the inside of the train, though. <laughs> okay. One last look around before we leave. Let me know if you see anything that you think I should investigate. I swear to God, Dan is here somewhere. Saying goodbye to Wagen is harder than I thought. I've only been here a few days, and yet, now that I know how much this place is linked to my own history, I feel attached to it. So far, I haven't seen any options to just, like, not go. Uh-huh. What have we here? The deportation trains left Wagen from this station during the Second World War. How many lives did those brown shadow barbarians destroy? Is there any justice for those who were massacred? I guess I can't just walk off in that direction. <laughs> I guess this guy is blocking my way in that direction. So this is supposed to be 2005. These people are wearing interesting clothes for 2005. What do you think? Should I get on the train? <laughs> Is it time? Do I have to give in? I did not want to do that. Please, let me see her at the window and jump off the train at the last minute and, like, that's the end of the Siberia story. <laughs> hey, Oscar. One last look. So, is this really the end of the journey? Yes, Oscar. I'm afraid it will. This ticket will take me to the it's... international airport of Wagen and from there, back to New York. I didn't mean to cut off the dialogue there. <laughs> no, I think this might be it. Olivia sent me a plane ticket for New York. What if? What if? Oh, forget it. What if? Ah, oh, wrong button. Open the blind, you fool. Okay, wait. No, 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 no. Look back at the window. Open the blind. Oh, come on, game. Let me open the blind. <laughs> I want to look out the window. There we go.
What is that? Beltair, yes, yes, yes. We're gonna switch trains. Let's jump over on that one. Yes, we're going to Baltiar. Go, Kate, go! Screw Olivia. <laughs> That's it? That's all they ever talked about. How they were going to live over there after the war, along with Ludwig and his tribe. She's still out there, Kate. I left the United States for the only destination that had any meaning for me. I'm getting chills. Farewell, my dear Lenny. The only destination that had any meaning. Kate Walker is everything all. I know where she is, Oscar. I know where Dana went after she left America. The train to the airport is about to depart. All passengers Come on, Oscar, we gotta go. Anyone not going to the airport is kindly asked to leave the train immediately. Yes? Yes? Come on! Run, Kate! <laughs> Run! Come on! Oh, game, what are you gonna make me do here? Ludwig! Yes! The what are you doing? logic. <laughs> Going home. What about Demoza Lenny? Lenny's gone. In her sleep. Too much guilt. Too much sorrow. Oh. I took her in the mountain with Leon. They're together now. What about you, Kate Walker? I'm going back home too, in a way. Oh yeah. Achievement unlocked, grief accomplished. This looks like a Hans Vorlberg train. Yes. All right, so yeah, I don't know if there are gonna be any more games after this, because as you saw, Benoit Sokal was the creator, and uh, he has passed away, so I don't know that there will be any more games in this series. Yep, grief accomplished. Damn, that was so good. So how are you doing, Frostellian? What are you up to today? Are you gonna be streaming today? That was that was an emotional roller coaster for me by the end. Have you ever played any of the games in this series?
I'm gonna let the credits roll, by the way. Same old, same old. You'll be starting up in a bit? Nice! You haven't heard of them? Um, it's an adventure game series, as you may have guessed. Um, and like the original Siberia is like the flat point and click original adventure game kind of thing. I think, I think this one is possibly my favorite at this point. Also, this is definitely the one that I got the most emotionally invested in, but part of that I think is also because I played the other ones before this one. The first, the first one's really, really good. The second one is good. The third one, we don't speak about the third one. <laughs> this is the, this one here is the fourth. <laughs> but yeah, I love so many things about this one. This one was a little bit light on the puzzles. I really, really enjoyed the puzzles that were in it and that I did, but if, I don't know, it didn't feel like it was heavy on like solving things. It felt like, to me, it felt like it was a little, it was a lot more invested in this story in this one. And I love the things that they did with where you were like swapping characters and the way they showed, you know, what happened with, in the past and the way they tied it in with the present, the present being 2005. Um, I love the way they did that. The transitions were really well done. The way they tied the story in together and the way they gave you like little clues at the end that could have, you could have picked up throughout the game to feel like, oh my god, you know, like, I didn't even see that. <laughs> How long does this go on for? I just don't want to tab out because I know it's going to stop the music. The music for this game is amazing. There, we'll swap back to it. You read a lot and you're okay with RPGs, but you struggle with types of games. You find the pacing too slow. Do you? Um... I'm trying to th figure out if you would find the pacing of like a game like this too slow or not. I'm not sure. When you say you struggle with types of games, do you mean adventure types of games? Because I mean, you're kind of in control of the pacing yourself, but I suppose that depends too on how difficult the puzzles are, right? If the puzzles are really difficult, the game's gonna be slower. I like it when the puzzles are actually a little bit on the easy side in terms of streaming because when I'm streaming, I'm not as focused on the puzzles and so I want the puzzles to be challenging enough to interest me but also easy enough that I can keep the game going for the sake of the stream. I think the worst for me is if I'm streaming a game with puzzles in it and I get stumped and I'm just like going in circles trying to solve it and I feel like it's not very interesting for people watching. I don't like that. <laughs> you needed all the animations, you were just watching 50 to 100 times faster. <laughs> Well, I loved, I loved this one. I felt like it was just about right for me, especially in terms of streaming. I felt like I was able to keep going. I didn't feel like, there were a couple of puzzles that just took me a little bit longer to solve, but for the most part, I was able to go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, and keep things going. I think from a gameplay perspective for this kind of game, I found it a little bit light in the puzzles at the beginning of the game. It was really, really heavy on the story, which I enjoyed. I liked that. And I got really, I got really emotionally invested in it. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, that's it. I'm done. I'm done with this game. It was so good. I really, really loved it. Um, I don't know if they're going to come out with more. This might be the end. 
You played Super Liminal? Super Liminal? That was an interesting puzzle game, very short. I'll have to try it out. I've heard of it before. I don't know. If it's if it's hard, then I don't want to do it. <laughs> if it's too hard, then I don't want to do it, because I don't want to be sitting here, like, going in, like I said, going in circles, like, uh, trying to figure stuff out. So, yeah. Anyhow, that's it. I'm done. Um, I'm going to be increasing my streaming schedule. I'm going to add today. As in, at the same time as I did today, I'm going to add it as another, I think, regular stream. I'm going to add Wednesday evenings and Thursday evenings as a regular stream too, I think. So I'll be adding that to my Twitch schedule. If there's anyone in here who is not already following Frostellian, please check out his channel. And you're going to be starting up in shortly from what you just said. So anyhow, I'll see you over there. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.